What's up guys, Coach Bobby here. Welcome back to my video blog series, 45 till 45, where I talk to you guys about nutrition, about fitness, about how I think 45 days in a row, hopefully, or 45 days out until my 45th birthday. So in today's installment, I'm going to go over some things that I think might be foundational in your thinking process and will help explain to you exactly how our bodies work, exactly how we can use that science that uh, biology to our benefit, okay? So today I'm gonna go over a few things. I'm gonna talk to you about what inspired this video. And basically it was two things that happened to me last week uh, that inspired me to do this video. I actually filmed the video last week, but I'm hard on myself, I didn't like it, and God has a way of making you uh, appreciate things, so for some reason I deleted the video, even though I would have posted it. Uh, but now I'm forced to redo it, which in some ways is good, but it goes to remind you that sometimes you don't always get what you think you want. So I'm refilming a video that I actually filmed last week. So I'm going to go over the two instances, the two things that happened to me that uh, inspired me to do this video. And then from that, I'm going to explain to you guys, as I have done before, but I'm going to explain to you exactly how the body works and exactly uh, what we need to do to number one, avoid fat storage, and number two, get our body regularly into a state where it's burning uh, fat and using body fat for fuel, okay? And then I'm gonna talk to you about how we, how we fix that. Once we know what happens to our body, how our bodies work, what are some steps and some measures that we can take immediately to fix that issue, fix that problem, to move our body to toward a, a, a state of betterment, toward a state of more lean tissue and less body fat, all right? And then I'm gonna to explain to you, uh, uh, without trying to sell it, but explain to you how uh, usage of an exogenous ketone supplement, like the one I use, uh, Keto OS, can be very beneficial in helping you do uh, what we need to do in order to change our body's composition, all right? So right away I'll get into it. So the two things that happened to me, and this board I know is not visible to you guys, I don't think, uh, I'm gonna provide you a, a image, a snapshot of the board. Uh, so, so try to follow along with the audio and, and me uh, without having clear vision of what the board says, all right? So the two things that happened to me that inspired me to film this video, and, and they made me think, uh, of, of what I always think when it happened, and they they reminded me of how the body works, but it, but it it brought up a, a why, a, a an idea of someone who doesn't know how the body works. Why? Why is that the case? So the case, the the, the scenario one was I was at my son's football practice, and there were there were parents exercising, right, and walking around the track. Uh, and it reminded me of, of, of people, many of us, who do exercise that we state uh, to me or to our friends that yes, I know it's not a lot, but it's better than nothing, right? BTN, better than nothing. And so that concept has some relevance, right? I was gonna go over the three areas of fitness that we, we convolute, that we confuse, uh, but I'll save that for a different uh, video because it, it 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 deserves more attention, but basically there are some there are some reasons why doing going for a walk, uh, eating uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, things like that are better than doing nothing. Uh, but if we're trying to change our body composition, if we're trying to lose body fat, uh, I'm going to explain to you how it's not really better than nothing. It's really almost the same as nothing. And so I saw this person walking around and I was actually training some other parents and asked the person to join us and you know the, the, again their reply was they're doing their own thing that day and that it was better than nothing. So I'm going to talk to you about why. Remember I said why? Why is that not better than nothing? And why it's almost the same as nothing. So fast forward about two hours from that from that particular instance, and it, you know, we get out late on Tuesday um, and Thursday nights and Friday nights for my son's practice. So if I haven't prepared food, sometimes we have to go fast food or go somewhere and pick up something fast, right? We all have that issue 
at some time in our lives or during every week for some of us. And so I hadn't had Panda Express, Panda Express in a while. So one of our family favorites is Panda Express. So we all, so I decided, you know, I'm gonna go to Panda Express. Normally I would be smart about it and I would get some chicken uh, and some vegetables, right? Some chicken and vegetables to uh, at least eat on the, on the uh, lower carb side of things. Not necessarily healthier, but lower carb side of things. Uh, but in this case, I hadn't been to Panda Express in a while, and so uh, I did the family dishes, the bigger dishes. Instead of getting our own individual dishes, I got four, you know, the family, I think it's called a family meal or family special, where you get three entrees and, and three sides, or four entrees and three sides. So one of my sides was fried rice, which I love. And so um, I was okay with having that because I knew um, where, my, where my glucose levels were at that day, right? Having measured myself, weighed myself in the morning, having worked out that day, albeit lightly, that's my off day typically, um, I still kind of knew where my glycogen and glucose stores, which I'll get into, were at. So I knew based on knowing my body, knowing how the body works, that I was in, in little, if any, danger of my body storing extra energy as body fat. So because of that, I could have fried rice. Because of that, on weekends, I can have things like pizza and hamburgers and fries and cookies and ice cream. Because I understand how my body works. I understand what to do to put it in a state of fat burning to, to make sure I avoid a state of fat storage. So, so because of that, I was able to eat Panda Express, even though two hours before that, I wanted to give this person a hard time about not really exercising. So a lot of times people are under the impression that I train all the time, that I always eat lean chicken and broccoli, and people who know me closely know that that is far, far, far from the truth. But I know when and where and how much and at what frequencies to do all those things, to work out, to eat right, uh, and so forth. So, uh, so those two, those two scenarios, those two events are what inspired this video. The person walking around around the track and thinking that that she was doing something to move her closer to her goal, which is not the case, and then me appearing to be hypocritical, going out and eating fried rice, right? So that inspired what this video is all about. An instructional video on how our body works and how we can can learn from that and use that knowledge to move forward, okay? So how how we work, how does our body work? Go on this side. So, so our bodies work in a very simplistic manner, very simplistic manner. We have the equivalent or, or the analog, analogy of two fuel tanks, right? So I drew out I drew out two fuel tanks here, right? One fuel tank is, is made up of glucose, right, carbohydrates, sugar, and glycogen, which is stored, the stored uh, variation or the stored form of glucose, right? So our bloodstream takes in carbohydrates, converts it into glucose units that we either use immediately upon eating or our body stores in our muscle or our liver as glycogen, right? So, so the combination of all that, of our bloodstream glucose and our stored glucose in the form of glycogen in our liver and muscles, that makes up what I call the glucose glycogen fuel tank, right? That's where we get, or most people get most of their energy for daily use. So everything we do 24 seven requires fuel like a car. So most of us run almost solely on, on the glucose glycogen fuel tank, right? We eat high carb diets. We seldom uh, deplete or get rid of or use up that fuel. So most of us have, have an abundance of this kind of fuel available to our bodies, right? So that's one fuel tank that our bodies have available. The other fuel tank is made up of ketones, right? Ketone bodies, right? 
and a ketone body is the byproduct of our body converting body fat or oxidizing body fat into energy, right? So you have the glycogen glucose tank and you have a ketone tank, right? The ketone tank, again, is fat converted into fuel, all right? So what we want to do is, is use body fat for fuel, right? We want to use our body's uh, uh, pent-up, stored capacity for fuel we want to use that for daily use if we can, right? We want to get rid of all this stuff, right? All this stuff if we can. So we prefer to have our, our, our body fat be the primary use of our fuel. However, that's impossible if our body has available to it glycogen and glucose, right? So our bodies prefer to use glycogen and glucose. It's an easier, it's, our bodies are lazy. It's an easier conversion into fuel. It's readily available. It's easily converted into energy. So if available, our bodies prefer to use glycogen and glucose for fuel, right? Only once, only once our body has no more glucose or glycogen will it then convert or begin to convert body fat into energy. Right, so not until we are rid of this fuel source will our body be required to find an alternative fuel source. Right, that's why this whole notion of fat burning zone is 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 not accurate to say the you know to say the nice way. Right, it's it's really stupid to be honest with you because how can our body burn fat when we just had a donut? Right? How, how can a heart rate tell us we're in fat burning zone when we just had rice right, or some bread? Right? It's, it makes no sense. So if our body has glycogen or glucose available to it, it prefers to use that. Now our bodies run more efficiently, and studies show this, run more efficiently on ketones. So if, if, if you are able to do a ketogenic diet, which I've never tried, but if you are able to do that where you have no carbs for extended periods of time and your body's forced to go into the state of ketosis where it's regularly producing ketones, that energy fuel is much more efficient. You think more clearly, you sleep better, your, your energy levels are steady and high, right, as opposed to up and down like you have with glycogen. So our bodies run more effectively. Our body and brain runs more efficiently on ketones. They prefer to use the easy source, glycogen and glucose, right? So the trick to losing fat comes in two parts, right? Comes in two parts. The trick to, to changing your body composition comes in two parts, okay? So how do we fix that, right? So, so how do we fix it? It's two parts. Number one, we have to stop getting fatter, right? We have to stop getting fatter. We have to stop living in this perpetual state where our glycogen glucose tanks are almost always full, right? All we really care about, guys, is the two endpoints, right? That's why when people lose weight, you know, on a diet initially, I don't really play a lot of, uh, pay a lot of credence to that because it's mainly the middle portion of the glycogen tank, right? It's mainly stored up glycogen and glucose that they're losing. Right, and what happens is your body, uh, for every one unit or, or one part of glycogen, your body stores three parts water. Right, so when your body stores one part of glycogen in the muscle or the liver, what comes with that are three parts water. So when you go low carb, your body's gonna gonna use up the bloodstream carbohydrates or glucose, and then it's gonna reach back to the stored glycogen in your muscle and liver. When, when it uses that up, it's going to use that up with water as well. So it's going to get rid of glycogen, and for every part glycogen, get rid of three parts water. So you lose weight, right? You lose weight. But for the most part, your body composition in those diets has not changed. You have not yet tapped into fat stores, right? And, and that equation doesn't, doesn't uh, talk about fitness or, 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 or strength or muscle. So if the muscle didn't change and your fat didn't change, then all the changes that you see are stored glycogen and water. 
okay? So for the most part, most people live inside this parameter, if you will, where they'll, they'll be full of glycogen or close to full. They'll go on a diet. They'll deplete some of the glycogen, but not all of it most times. They'll lose weight, right, but not change body composition. They'll feel good about it, but they'll never get to a state where they're consistently depleting their glycogen, which I'll get into, where they're losing fat. So they're losing water and glycogen, but they haven't changed anything. So all we care about, all we care about is the endpoints, right? Stop getting fatter means never let your body get full of glycogen and glucose. Because once that happens, your body has nowhere to put excess fuel, excess energy. So if most of us live in a state where we always have carbs and very seldom exercise, our glucose glycogen tanks are 65% full, 85% full, 90% full, right? So we're far from losing fat, right? Because in order to lose fat, we have to deplete that completely. But more importantly, we are almost always close to storing fat, right? So now when you go away for a weekend or, or when you celebrate something or when you are injured and have to be home for several days, whatever reason, where the, the intake is increased and the, and the output, the exercise, the expenditure of calories, of energy is decreased, now you're going to be at high risk of going over. And once you go over, and once your, once your body has nowhere else to put excess fuel, it begins fat storage almost immediately, right? And one of the stories I tell people is, and, and it should be scary, and, and it should definitely resonate, is that you can go 30 days on, on a low-calorie diet. Initially, you will lose weight. Again, stored glycogen and water. You will feel good, but you're still not tapping into the fat. So you lost five pounds in a week, you lost eight pounds in two weeks, but it levels off because you have depleted most of this water and glycogen, and now you're kind of staying there, right? Not going low enough, not fasting, like I suggest, not going no carb, you know, at, at least intermittently to allow your body to be in a state where it has nothing to draw upon except body fat. If you don't do that, you stagnate, and now it's been two weeks three weeks, whatever it is, with no more weight loss, right, not fat loss, and then you get frustrated, right? Or you want to celebrate, right? Frustrated or celebrate. Either way, you may, what happens often is you, is you go off the wagon, so to speak. You go away to Napa, or you go on a trip, or you celebrate over a weekend, or you have a birthday party, whatever it is, or you enjoy that meal you've been waiting for. What happens is on Friday you do that. You have cocktails. You have food. Now you fill up that glycogen glucose tank right away. You gain three pounds. But again, even the weight gain is artificial because it's now it's stored glycogen and water, right? Again, you haven't added body fat. You just gained a little bit of weight, but it's artificial. But if you continue along that, let's say you go away for a weekend and you, and you have fun Friday night. You wake up Saturday morning, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have dinner. You do the same thing Sunday. Now... At about, at about 527 on Saturday, Saturday evening, your capacity for glycogen and glucose is full, right? Everything you eat after that moment begins fat storage, right? Begins to be converted to fat. Your body has nowhere else to put it, right? Your, 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 your bloodstream is full, right? What it, what it could use, it used. The rest of it, insulin pushed it out into your liver and bloodstream. That's full, so your body has nowhere else to put this extra fuel that you're giving it at dinner, at breakfast, at snack, whatever it is, right? So it begins almost immediately fat storage, right? Fat of which many people will never get off because they refuse to adhere to this, this, this part of the equation of regularly depleting their glycogen to allow their body to tap into that fat that they stored. So for many people who live perpetually right at this 85% level and then occasionally go over and almost never deplete completely they're always in this in the, in this scenario where after a year they've gained 5 pounds and they're wondering how this is how this is how 
right? You could be clean for 30 days, never deplete completely, never lose fat, and then one weekend gain fat and store fat that you might never take off. All right, so the key is the endpoints, right? So we have to stop getting fatter by not letting ourselves ever get to the point where our glycogen stores are too high, right? And I'll go over ways to track that. You know, you can, it's not too scientific, but there's ways to monitor where these are at. But the key, again, is to make sure that we either take measures exercise-wise to deplete it or, and or take measures eating window-wise to not put as much carbohydrate, glucose fuel into the tank, right? Because I don't know about you, but there's no event, no person, no celebration worth permanently storing fat on my body. So if I'm going somewhere for a weekend and I know I haven't done anything this week, I might fast, I might exercise before I leave. I'm gonna do something to make sure I bring this glycogen tank down so as when I go out and have fun and eat what I want, I don't have a risk of going over. That's why I could have Panda Express, right? I knew where I was at by weighing myself. I knew where I was at by, by working out. So I was at no risk of gaining fat. No risk, almost zero risk of gaining fat after eating that fried rice, okay? So that's the first step. We have to stop gaining a pound of fat every quarter right, or gaining a pound of fat every month, right? We have to stop doing that. And once you understand how, which you should already understand, how hard it is to get off, get fat off, you will never ever even want to do that. So that's the first step, stop getting fatter. Stop getting fatter. That's the first step, okay? After that, then we can live and plan differently so that we can get into a state where we're actually taking some of that body fat off, right? Take some off. So how do we do that? Again, we have to deplete this glycogen regularly, right? I did a video yesterday talking about every workout has to accomplish three things, right? Number one, build muscle. That's going to help us burn more, burn, burn this at a higher rate, our metabolism, right? So our bodies are going to burn through this glycogen tank 24-7. Every minute of every day, our body's using fuel for something. Right? Our body uses energy for something, breathing, walking, lifting, talking, thinking. All those things require energy right? that our body gets from this tank or this tank. So the more muscle you have, the leaner you are, the faster the rate of the decrease of this, right? our metabolism. So the workouts we do have to, have to help us with that have to move toward having a body that is leaner, that burns through glycogen quicker, right? So our, our, our workouts have to do that. They have to deplete glycogen and expand the metabolic window, right? I went over that yesterday in the video. So we wanna make sure, so I made sure that, that I was low enough to where having that fried rice was gonna put me at no threat of fat gain, all right? So now when we, when we move forward, we have to say, okay, now where we stop getting fatter, let's take measures to actually lose body fat, all right? So we have to live and plan differently, right? Again, we're, we're, we're trying to get to a point where the regular state that we live in is not 85, 90% full capacity of glycogen. What we want to do is try to reduce that over time to where it's regularly lower, how do you do that? You go low carb more often, right? You fast occasionally in the beginning, right? You, you work out more regularly. You work out intensely to bring these things, that, uh, this level down more quickly, right? If your time is limited to exercise, make sure you're doing things that are gonna maximize the, the um, evaporation of this glycogen. Right, the usage of this glycogen, right? So if you have an hour to spend, you can do it running, right? Steady state cardio, which is gonna bring this down a little bit, or you can do it doing an intense, uh, high intensity UMC workout, which will decrease this more. Right? That's why I encourage people to at least look into do high, doing higher intensity exercises. It's about power output. It's about what can I do that's gonna require my body to use as much glycogen as possible. Right? So we want to live and plan differently so that we are living regularly 
with less glycogen in our body. Not necessarily zero, right? I want you to have fun still. I want you to enjoy your life. But do it in a way that means we don't ever get to the point where this is high, right? I mean, not ever, but regularly. Like most of the days of our week should be spent with this glycogen storage level at about half full or less, right? Because the next step is to occasionally, right, initially, but, but as you grow in this concept, do it more often, but to regularly deplete this glycogen storage to zero, to zero, and then have it be at zero for as long as you can. So the more often you deplete the glycogen, and the longer each period of glycogen depletion lasts, the more body fat you burn, right? So if you imagine that once your body is, is, is through or depleted of glycogen, a furnace kicks on or an oven kicks on, and it takes an hour to warm up or two hours to warm up, whatever it is, right? If you imagine that scenario, then once you have, have eaten your last carbohydrates and once you've burned through it, right, your body has no more carbohydrates at that point or no more glucose. At that point, your body turns on this, this switch to burn fat, okay? So you want to have that switch on for as long as you can, right, to retrieve body fat for fuel. Once you eat glucose or carbohydrates, that, that, that switch turns off. So you want, you want to turn it on as often as possible and have it on for as long as possible, right? So I, I say move toward a model, and I have a spreadsheet that I can send you if you want it, but try to move to a model where half your week is theoretically spent in fat burning, right? Again, that's done via exercise at a high power output, in a high power output way, and then having periods where you have no, no glucose or glycogen input into your body. Again, not necessarily every day or all the time, but periods long periods of time where your body has no glycogen to draw upon, okay? And so uh, if you do that regularly, your body will adapt and become what's called a ketone or fat-burning vehicle, right, or machine, right? Right now our bodies run on sugar, right? We're all sugar burners. Not me anymore, but I used to be, right? What we're trying to do is get our body to be fat burners, for our body to learn that, Body fat, dietary fat and body fat are the preferred energy sources. And that takes time. So the key is you have to live and plan your life differently, but live and plan your life permanently. Right? You want to change these things forever. Right? Change these things so that your body can continually tap into the body fat. Right? Because if you're watching this video, the likelihood is that you have much more body fat than you should and could. So, but we have to think permanently. We have to think that we never want to be full. And again, I'm not sure if there's anything that's worth storing even an ounce of body fat for, right? So we have to make sure that permanently we live in a state where we're below capacity in glycogen. And then permanently and regularly want to live in a state where we make sure we schedule our body to have periods where it can draw upon body fat for fuel, right? And that doesn't happen by accident. It happens because we work out, we deplete, we don't put glucose in our body for periods of time. We do it smartly, but we have to make sure that it's done permanently, not just some quick fad. I mean, you, again, you can lose five pounds like that, right? But it's all in here, inside here. None of it's fat. It's gonna be all glycogen and all water, right? We're trying to change our body composition. And that's done by having a, a, a structure that is different than we've been doing, but also permanent, all right? So the last piece of this is how it, it seems hard, right? And it can be hard, right? Ketogenic dieting is hard, right? Anybody who's ever tried it, going no carb for three to seven days, I mean, under 50 grams, I think, I think is what it is, which is nothing, it's extremely hard, right? If you get past that and you're able to get into ketosis, it's wonderful, right? But the process is very, very difficult and very hard to sustain, right? If you have friends who have been uh, in ketosis or have followed ketogenic diets, you know a lot of them have gone back and forth 
in and out of that, of that ideology. And so it can be very difficult. So using a supplement like Keto OS makes most of this process seamless. Very seamless, almost too easy, right? Why? Because you're giving your body the byproduct of what that, that arduous, that difficult process would produce. Right, if you starve yourself of, of carbohydrates for again three to seven days and your body uses up all of this glycogen it has with it and then taps into all your stores, then your body will go into ketosis. Your body will be forced to produce its own ketones. Right? This drink gives you what that whole process produces directly. Right? So people ask me, well, how does that how does that lose body fat? It doesn't. It's not a fat burning product. But what it does is it allows you to move toward this, this, um, this commitment to a lower carb, lower glycogen uh, dependency, right, without going through all the mood swings, the headaches, the low energy. So it gives your body a fuel source that will, not, that will prevent the triggering of the hormones that make you hungry, that make you tired, that, that give you headaches, that change your mood. All those triggers are turned off or never turned on because your body is in a state as if it had already gone through that. So it has a fuel source and it, it does not feel the need to be hungry, to have a headache, to be grumpy. All those things that would happen if you went cold turkey with glucose, uh, that this prevents it, right? Not, not to mention there are several benefits, again, to ketones in your body. If you look up or Google ketones, not the exogenous ketones, not the supplement, but just ketones, you will see that there are many, many, many benefits from neurological to links to different diseases uh, that are associated with glucose. There are many benefits to having ketones be your body's primary source or fuel other, rather than glucose. So, uh, so by having this, you get the benefits of having gone through the process of ketogenic dieting without going through it, and then you're able to begin the process of actually going through it, of, of lowering your dependency on glycogen, on glucose, uh, without going through all the crap that you have to go through. So I highly suggest that if you're going to try this whole process, if you're going to try to regularly deplete your glycogen, if you're going to try to go periods of time without putting any more glycogen in your body, to get this to a point where it's zero and you can draw upon body fat, if you're gonna try doing that, I recommend you try this as a, at least a bridge to begin with to help you in the process, all right? But if you do this, right, this is simplistic. Not easy, but very, simp very simplistic, right? It comes down to management of glycogen. That's, what, that's all it is. Your body composition changing comes down to the management of your glucose and glycogen tank. Right? If you let it get full too often or regularly, you're going to get fatter. If you regularly empty it out and allow it to be empty for a while to allow your body to turn the oven on and burn fat slowly and use fat slowly, if you do that regularly, you will lose body fat. It's very simple. It's very simple. Right? Not easy necessarily. Easier with Keto OS, I promise you. Not easy, but doable. All right? So I hope that was helpful. Um, it was long, uh, but hopefully, hopefully it was helpful. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to post them. Instant message me, direct message me, text me, whatever it is. Uh, I'm here to help you guys figure this out. But it's been, I mean, it's been, a, it's been the reason I've been able to, to, to kind of change my body composition, right? And I, don't, I mean, I sell my abs a lot, but I'll, I'll be 45, right? I'll be 45 this year, and... I played corner back in college, and I never would have thought I would be, at least look better at 45 than I did at 23 when I was running around UC Davis with my shirt off, showing off. Um, and I do it in a much easier fashion. I train less, you know, I don't, I don't uh, count calories, I don't prepare my foods on Sunday. Um, I just follow this very simplistic formula, and I adhere to you know, this philosophy and ideology and it's paid dividends. All right. So as always, have a wonderful day. Um, I will talk to you guys in my new shirt.
bought this, tested it out, got a little discount. Um, but we're all here for a reason, and hopefully this is one of my reasons that God put me here, was to give you guys some guidance. Uh, so feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. All right, guys, have a great day. I love you, as always. Better than yesterday, BTY.